Group 1 of the periodic table is a group of reactive metals. Lithium, sodium and potassium are at the top. These metals are so reactive they have to be stored under oil and need to be handled with care. Lithium is so soft it can be cut with a knife. You can see how shiny the freshly cut surface is. But leave it exposed to the air for a few seconds and it quickly begins to tarnish. It's reacting with the air. This is sodium. It's even easier to cut and again the shiny surface soon discolours. Potassium is even softer and reacts so quickly it tarnishes immediately. Another way of comparing reactivity is to place the metals in water. Lithium floats. It reacts immediately, fizzing and skating around on the water, which is evidence that a gas is being produced. By carefully putting a tiny amount into a boiling tube, the gas can be tested with a lit splint. A squeaky pop means it's hydrogen. Universal indicator shows that at the end of the reaction, the solution is alkaline. Lithium reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. So how does sodium react? Again, it floats on the water and fizzes. The gas produced is hydrogen. And the solution is alkaline. When sodium reacts with water, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen are formed. Sodium is more reactive than lithium. It's below lithium in the periodic table. Potassium is below sodium. So how do you expect potassium to behave? Potassium is definitely more reactive than sodium and lithium. It reacts immediately and the hydrogen produced ignites on its own. Universal indicator goes blue. Potassium reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. Rubidium and cesium are elements which lie below potassium in the periodic table. How would you expect rubidium and cesium to react with water? <laughs>